Hi, Gaz Williams here. I'm here to review the Sonus Wahoo. Okay, so in that little intro piece there, I was playing my Reverend Rumblefish plugged into a Mark Bass Distorsore distortion pedal into the Sonus Wahoo and then out into the Memory Man, which I was just using as a looper. That's then going into the TCRH450 into the RS112 cab, picked up by the SE Electronics Voodoo VR1. The Sonus Wahoo is a wah pedal with quite a bit of a difference really. So we can use it just like a wah, but if we wanted to, we can go through the rabbit hole and go quite a lot deeper. But importantly, the thing to understand with the wahoo is it is an analog signal path. So it's an analog pedal, but it's digitally controlled. This offers the best of both worlds because it allows the pedal to have great analog sound, but also to have loads of great features that can only really happen within the digital realm. You've got 100 presets and 100 user presets. So uh, 100 factory presets, 100 user presets. So there's tons and tons of sounds in there and plenty of spaces. But also with it being a digitally controlled pedal, it's actually got a USB socket on it as well. This allows it to sort of connect to the computer where it's got a brilliant software editor, which you can adjust on the fly and just and use the, the graphic interface there rather than using all the controls on the device itself. But it also allows, it allows the pedal to synchronize to any music software that you're running on your computer. So that kind of keeps some of the other features of the Wahoo synchronized in time. It's designed for guitar and bass. I'm using it with bass here, obviously, but you could actually plug anything into it. But it's really, really good to sort of use with a guitar and bass because it kind of gives us uh, the sort of control that keyboard players have enjoyed for many, many years. You know, keyboard players are very familiar with terms like cutoff and resonance and LFOs, etc. Guitar players, maybe not so much, but this, this pedal tries to sort of integrate that sort of synthesizer type approach, but into a into a stomp box format. The build quality is brilliant. It's made out of metal. The action of the pedal is lovely as well. It just feels great. It's got the right sort of gradient to it. And also it doesn't use any pots or anything. So, so there's nothing that'll ever wear out or it'll never get scratchy. I should mention transparent true bypass. They call it transparent because as you're switching it in and out, we can hear a physical click as I'm doing it, but it won't click it'll be completely silent from the actual, the audio signal path. It's not just one filter, it's actually a dual filter. So you've got two entirely separately configurable filters that you can run in syn synchronization. Uh, or however you want. There's basically the filters operate in four modes. Those four modes are pedal, so that's like a wah-wah, but it could also be like filter sweeps. The other modes are envelope, which I was using for the first part of the loop there. Then there's LFO mode and the final mode is the pitch tracking mode. Now the pitch tracking mode is something that is just doesn't exist anywhere else so it's a complete unique thing about this pedal. Let's have a look at the software editor and then I can just sort of be able to explain a little bit about the structure of the pedal. So it's running on a Mac here but it's actually available for the for PC too and it's it connects as I say via USB. You can power it from batteries, USB or a 9 volt adapter so it's quite flexible in that, in that way. But if we look at the editor then, we can see that this main panel here shows us where our filter starts and where it finishes. If I set this now to uh, pedal mode, this blob here is like when the, when the heel is all the way down and then the triangle is when the toe, we can call that toe down. So when, once the pedal's all the way down 
And you can see one thing that's really cool is we can set the resonance for both the start and the end position. Now that's cool. By having like maybe in this instance here, we've got like no resonance at the beginning and it ends with loads of resonance. Let's say, and in fact, it will self oscillate. I'm just using one filter. I'm using it in the pedal mode and I'm doing it across the whole sweep from 10 hertz, that's way actually below human hearing, right up to four kilohertz. With my heel all the way down, we get in that low frequency. So as I start to move up, we can hear the filter open until it's fully open there. Bypass, on get this really nice smooth low end. So by increasing the resonance now in the low end, we can get that. You might want to listen to this through some speakers that can handle bass, because it does go quite low. <laughs> right. So this is just one filter of the possible two filters and out of the possible four different modes. So let's look at the software again and see how we can configure it further. So here we can see if it's what the mode is. So we've got pedal, as I say, LFO, envelope and pitch. So envelope is like an envelope filter, meaning that depending on how hard you play, it's a little bit rather than doing it with your foot, then it's actually more to do with, you know, if I play really hard, it's equivalent to having the toe all the way down. Or if I play really soft, it's like having the filter down. So I can... So it's nice, it's responding to your playing dynamics. One nice feature that's built into the pedal is that there is a global sensitivity for the well, effectively for the envelope. So you set it once and then all the presets then will sort of respond. And that's a kind of cool thing about this particular pedal is it's absolutely jam packed full of innovation, innovation and well thought out ideas. So let's have a look at some more of them. LFO. Now this is a whole heap of stuff we can do with the LFO. We could set it to a fixed tempo. So if we knew we were going to be playing at say in this case, 120 BPM, that's what we would use. But if we look in the tap, we can set it to tap tempo. Now the tap tempo, you have to kind of rock the pedal back and forward to set the tempo, but it's okay. You get the hang of it. It's actually, it's actually quite, it's actually quite intuitive really. And there's also uh, on top of that as well, there is uh, there's a, there's a pedal BPM mode. Now that's pretty cool. What that means is we can set two tempos, one when the heel is down and one when the toe is down. I'm going to put the type, into pedal BPM. Well, the low set to 60, that's cool, but let's set the high BPM. Let's set it really high, 600 BPM. So if I play this, very slow, as I move the pedal up, really fast. Now the shape is governed by the waveform of this particular LFO. This is a sine wave, which is a kind of smooth movement. But if we were to change the shape, we could change the shape into a triangle, a square, soar up, soar down, trapezoid and random. But now this LFO is the thing I was talking about earlier, which enables you to synchronize it to your host tempo. So what I've done here is I've got Reaper set up with a metronome. I've got the pedal connected with the USB. I've got the Wahoo in the MIDI settings of Reaper to respond uh, to, to tempo. So now I've got the MIDI sync set up. When I play, it will be locked into whatever the tempo of your music software is. And I can change the division. So I can make it go like a, a, a or I can make it go nice and slow if I wanted it to sort of change over time. The final mode then is the pitch tracking mode. Now, Sonus's earlier products have been all about pitch to MIDI. So they've brought out a bunch of different 
little boxes that allow you to plug your guitar in and it'll turn the output into MIDI, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. They, they work monophonically, but they, you know, you can use them for a whole bunch of things. So they've got this pitch tracking technology that they've used in those other devices. But in the Sonus' case, in the, the Wahoo's case rather, what the pitch tracking does is it means that the filter, rather than the filter responding to the pedal or to dynamics, it responds to the pitch of what you're playing. So what does that actually mean? Well, that means that when we set our resonant bump, rather than that being fixed in place and we move it with the pedal, it'll actually, it'll actually listen to to what I'm playing and follow and the filter will move around. Now I'll demonstrate that. I'm gonna put it into pitch mode. There's two types, this pitch bend and this pitch track. Pitch bend is quite cool because what pitch bend does, it means that it'll only open the filter if you bend a note. So for instance, you can hear the filter opens. You can set the amount of semitones it bends to. I think you can set it up to, I think it's like four octaves uh, or three octaves, uh, which if you're using a whammy, like a kind of Floyd Rose, you could get some really interesting uh, pitch, pitch effects. But uh, the mode I particularly like is the other mode, which is pitch track. Now, synthesizer players, again, they've had this. They've been able to set the filter to follow the key. So when you're playing in the left hand there, it's kind of much more bassy. And as you move up through the notes, as you get to the higher end, the filter opens and it allows the, the, the treble through. Uh, so we could have that in, in this case now where... So if we use this pitch tracking filter as a form of an enhancer, we can basically use it to sort of, to shore up the low end of like, it's certainly really good as a studio technique for bass guitar. So if you imagine this happening now, so as I'm playing my bass line, the frequency of the bass line is moving around. So if we put just like a little bump, as it moves around, it just enhances the, the, the kind of fundamental as it moves around. You might need to listen to this with headphones or speakers to appreciate it, but it's quite a subtle thing, but you can hear how it sounds. So without it, it sounds like this. with it. So it's just a sort of, like, like I, I would describe it as an intelligent enhancer. I think for a lot of people who are looking for a wah pedal, they might look at this and think, whoa, <laughs> you know, I just want a wah. I just want to turn it on and I want it to wah. And you certainly can do that with this. So maybe that's, this isn't the right pedal for you. But I think for someone like myself who uses lots of effects and has done over the years, but wants that more musical control, wants that depth, wants to be able to configure it in such a way, then this pedal is wonderful. I mean, I, I've been looking for filter pedals for years and years and years, and I've tried most of the ones that are out on the market, and there's some good ones, but there tends to be things that they're missing out on. Primarily for me, it's having lots and lots of memories. So, uh, so when you get that sound just right, you can save it. And if you wanna make sure, you can back it up on your computer as well, you know, so it's super duper saved. So that's a really, really strong uh, quality that, that this pedal's got. Negative points, I've been trying to think about them, if there are any, and there's not really many I can think of. I was really sort of uh, <laughs> scratching scratching my head on this one. Um, uh, I'd, it'd be great if it was stereo, but uh, Sonus informed me that uh, to, to maintain stereo uh, phase coherence would be very difficult with stereo. Maybe if there was a high pass filter in there, that would give an extra, an extra sort of texture to play around with. Maybe the thing I'd like to see most of all, if anything, would be on patches where you're not using the pedal to actually use that as a control for the, the dry wet mix or the, um, the filter blend. Because the filter, by the way, is parallel. So they run sort of, you can't run them in series. So you can't, the sound won't go into one filter and then hit the other filter. It basically hits both filters simultaneously and then you can choose what degree, what percentage you want of filter one, what percentage you want of filter two, which is still allows for lots of flexibility, but maybe to have them in series. But you know, there's so many things that this pedal does right that I feel almost churlish to kind of pick on things. Uh, so I think 
in summary then, if you're looking for the ultimate wah pedal or the ultimate filter pedal, then I, I seriously reckon that this is the one. Uh, as I say, if you're just looking for just a plain old wah, maybe this is a bit overkill for that. But then again, you know, you could, I think it's a, this is a pedal for life, you know, you're gonna kind of be tweaking out it for, for a long time to come, finding little nuances and just, you know, finding all sorts of interesting stuff. Uh, Sonus said that it's uh, the, the, the firmware is completely upgradable via USB. So who knows, maybe the extra functionality will come along in the future. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's a, super, a super, super bit of design and uh, I'm absolutely delighted with mine, so I'm gonna be playing it a lot, I think. <laughs> so the Wahoo from Sonus is available now. Its price is scrolling along the bottom here, but if you're quick, there's a special pre-order discount. So pop along to sonus.com and uh, pick up a bargain. Highly recommended from me, Gaz Williams, over and out.